What up, my party people? Welcome back to another uh, video. Glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. And today we've got an interesting one. I was going through the comments on my last video, Coles vs. Woolies, and amongst about 500,000 mud cake comments, there was one that stood out like a glistening gem in the afternoon sun. This guy will compare air. And you know what, Carl? You're right. I will compare air. And I'm comparing air right here, right now, in this video. I've been uh, collecting air samples since 8 o'clock last night and all throughout today. So let me tell you, I got a lot of air. I've collected every form of air I thought I could think of. And I'm going to be comparing air today. Comparing. Compare. Welcome to today's comparison. First up for today's comparison is warm air versus cold air. Uh, as you've seen, the cold air came straight out of the refrigerator and uh, the warm air has been microwaved. All right, here we go. Hmm. Interesting. The cold air has a bit of a kind of tangy scent, a bit plasticky. That, <laughs> that may be the plastic uh, bag it's in, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it isn't because the warm air is a lot more subtle. Like perhaps microwaving it just kind of mellowed out all the molecules. But if I had to choose between warm air or cold air, I'm gonna go ahead and say that warm air is the one. Now I said I started collecting air at eight o'clock last night. That's because I've got some night air, some morning air, and uh, some afternoon air. So going straight into the morning air. <laughs> okay, this was kind of a joke, but there's a big difference between the fresh morning air and the cold air. It does feel like I've just woke up and stepped outside on a morning of fresh air. All right, onto the afternoon air. And it is exactly that. Nothing special. I think afternoon air is probably the most basic form of air because you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's just afternoon air. Going on to the night air. Now, what I'm expecting from this is potentially, I don't know, a bit of a spooky vibe, like the air in night, it's dark. Yeah, when you close your eyes, zero to none, feels like it's nighttime. Look, if I'm honest, morning air, you can't go past a bit of morning air. Everybody's gone to bed, right? And they're not breathing the air outside. So the trees are doing their business, replacing the oxygen. So morning air is the best time. Afternoon air, I wouldn't write home about it. Um, and night air is really for those adventurous few that want like a kind of extraterrestrial uh, experience. Now, you know, I didn't just mess around with temperatures or times of the day for this air comparison. Um, I also went the industrial route uh, and I've got fan air which was fan blown into this bag by trusty, trusty fan and compressed air, which was compressed air squirted into this bag by an air compressor. This is honestly something that potentially you would never think to find the answers to, but that's why I'm here. To find the answers to things you never knew you needed an answer to. Yes. So you can feel the urgency in the air. But compressed air on the other side, I think it's gonna be that amplified tenfold. Oh yeah, oh that smells. Oh, I wish we had smell-o-vision. We've got sound-o-vision, but not smell-o-vision. Fan air is better than compressed air. Compressed air is uh, it's smelly. It, I don't know what it smells like, but it doesn't smell good. Now we've got our water air, which was collected uh, from a, a undisclosed lagoon, um, and dirt air, which is um, the air, dirt air is the air that is uh, just the layer above any kind of dirt. A little bit, 
ugh, a little bit salty actually. And um, I'm not just, just not sure if that is as fresh as it should be. But Dirt Air, well, Yeah, dirt air is interesting too. Dirt air is almost, um, it almost feels dirty. You wouldn't expect it, but something about it, it's just like whatever molecules are floating around near the dirt, I've captured them in here. Yeah, not really, not really any favorable options here. So if you do have a third option, I would probably go over that. Even if that is compressed air. No, actually no, I would choose dirt air over compressed air, but either way, not a good option. So here we go. These are two air capsules that have been frozen and this one got thawed out. Oh boy, that is like an arctic blitz hit you in the face. That is well and truly frozen air. You didn't think air could be frozen, but I guess it can. Now what do I want to expect from the thawed air? Because it's been frozen and then thawed. But realistically, did air freeze? So did anything actually different happen? There's only one way to find out. Oh. No. That isn't good. It's a funny word to describe air, but it's a bit stale. So I think on that side of things, I'm gonna have to go with the frozen air. So if you are freezing your air, don't defrost it before consumption. Just go ahead and consume that air from frozen. All right, now this one is realistically probably one of the comparisons that might most resonate with you because I've compared air that I've collected from a cupboard with air that I collected right next to a tree. So already, just pen on paper, you would think the tree air astronomically better than the cupboard air. And I would agree, um, but you never know. There's been stranger things to surprise me. Air could be like wine. You store it in a cool dark place for 20 years and it comes out better off. Now I was not able to get much of the cupboard air. It was a small space to do scooping. So this is a bit more of a, um, like a delicacy. Hmm. Similar to the, comp not as not as potent as the compressed air, but similar to the compressed air that it's been locked away. So I guess air is not like wine. This is the big kahuna right here. This is what we all came to see. Tree air. Is, tree, is the air around a tree truly better than the air in a cupboard? You know what? I think it might be. Yeah, I think it I think it may be because uh trees produce oxygen. Cupboards produce nothing. And that leaves us to the grand finale, the automotive edition. I collected air from inside my car and I collected air from outside my car. I think this is also going to be very one-sided, but scientists have to do what they have to do. The inside car air is a bit stale, but I think in comparison to the outside car air, as, as innocent as the name may look, this was probably not the best location outside the car to be collecting air. Um, so I will proceed to this one with caution. Yep. That is, <coughs> that's definitely um, not good at all. That's, oh, <laughs> that is almost flammable. So that is a, a out of the park win by the car, inside car air. I, <laughs> I didn't think that that would uh, hold its potency as well as it has, but that smelt exactly like it looks like it should have. And do not recommend, don't ever do that. That was for scientific purposes. I'm a professional, trained professional. We've got a medic over here on my right and um, a doctor over here on my left. So this is a controlled environment. So don't ever do that. Only true scientists like me can get away with that for scientific purposes. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, breathe the air that's inside your car not from the engine. Put your windows down. That's the best of both worlds. 
and get an indoor plant in your car. And I believe that's it. That's all the air. 15 air samples compared. And the good thing is, all of these airs are free. So, you know, you're not paying a premium for morning air compared to car. Or, as a matter of fact, car engine air is actually the most expensive and the worst. So, stay away from car engine air and air compressed air and steer towards tree air, morning air. Any kind of natural air will get the job done. As this may have surprised you, another surprise might be coming right around the corner. You never know what's going to happen here. And that's the jo that's the that's the journey. That's the adventure of subscribing to this YouTube video channel. I'll see you next time.